Welcome to my office. I'm Ilan Norbash, and what this video is going to do is run you through the process of using the GigaPan robot system for the first time. So we're going to talk about how to put batteries in the GigaPan, we're going to talk about how to set it up, and we're going to talk about how to actually take a panorama, download it to your computer, and stitch it. In this instructional video, we're going to be using the Canon SD800 camera. Uh, it's a nice small digital camera that works really well with the GigaPan, as do a number of other cameras. But the way you see me setting up this camera will be specific to this camera, but you can see how to do it with other cameras, hopefully. All right, so the first thing you do when you get the GigaPan unit is you got to put batteries in it. Now, the battery compartment is uh, open and closed with this door here. There's a screw, but you don't unscrew it. What you do is you just pull away from the unit on this lever here, and that opens up. It could be pretty tight uh, at times. The battery case is inside of here. There's a couple of different kinds of battery cases we have. Pulling this out can be challenging. Uh, there's a little white plug here that's polarized, and you want to grab as close as you can to the plug and pull in the hope that you don't break the wires. And there we go. So that's our battery holder. Uh, there's another type of battery holder you may receive with the unit that actually holds the batteries flat on one side. Um, the batteries are nickel metal hydride batteries, and this is one of the great chargers we have that's nice because it conditions each one of them separately and independently, so it really makes sure the battery is in fine shape. Now one word of uh, warning that's really important is that it turns out that this particular type of battery holder, it's easy to get the batteries in, but boy is it hard to get them out. Once you put the batteries in, I often use a penny to actually force them out again. It's six nickel metal hydride batteries total. I'm going ahead and put them all in so we can actually use our GigaPen. And once I've got the batteries in there, the next step is to put the battery holder back in the GigaPan. And I want to show you a few tricks of the trade that are kind of important. So we'll slide it right in the obvious crevice. The plug is polarized, and the horn that it has on the plug goes out toward the keyboard. So you'll see that I'm kind of plugging it in carefully here with the polarized plug. It's hard to see. And I'll push it in and make sure it's in all the way. With some of our battery holders, they can kind of get stuck in there. So what will happen is you'll open this, and the battery hold, holder will be stuck deep inside the GigaPan. Well, the last thing you want to do is yank on the wires real hard to pull it out because you can rip the wires out of the case. So if that kind of thing happens, what I like to do is I'll close the door and I'll actually bang on it hard. And that'll move the battery case to the front so you can pull it out. Anyway, our battery is in. It's plugged in. And I generally don't plug it in until I'm ready to actually shoot a panorama. So if I'm going hiking, I leave it unplugged so that if I happen to hit the on-off button by accident, it doesn't turn it on. Anyway, now we have our batteries in and we're ready to shoot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the Canon SD800 to the GigaPan unit. Now, once you attach the camera to the GigaPan, you can't access, in this case, the battery compartment. So we're going to go ahead and put the battery in the camera. Now I have a little battery charger here for the Canon, and I'll put that battery in. And as I put that battery in, um, I'm going to also show you the SD card. It's a two gigabyte card in this case. That's going to give us enough for uh, probably four or five gigapan panoramas. And the important thing is you can't do a gigapan with your El Cheapo 16 megabit card, megabyte card that comes with a camera. You really need something that has a couple of gigabytes of memory on it. Now I'm going to show you how we take the camera and actually attach it to the gigapan unit. And this is probably the most important part of the uh, construction process. One nice thing about it is as long as it's off, you can actually back drive it. So you can move the lever by hand. It's a little bit tight, but not too bad. The first thing you want to do is attach the camera itself to the unit so that it's in this orientation, so the lens is pointing that way. And I like to do that by twisting this around and taking the uh, nut that comes with the GigaPan, and into the quarter inch hole we go of the camera. Screw that down. Now, you'll notice that there's a slot here that allows us to laterally adjust the position of the camera this way. Uh, that's pretty important because on the other side of the arm, you'll see a diamond right there. That diamond marks the center of rotation of the GigaPan when it's rotating left and right. What we're going to do is we're going to adjust this so that that more or less falls in the center of the lens, and then we'll tighten it down some. There are other adjustments for the camera. Just so you know what they are, there's a slot right here. That slot allows you to take the entire armature that the camera is on and adjust it fore and aft so that the uh, unit uh, pitches about the focal center of the camera. Um, I happen to have that adjusted correctly for this camera right now, so I'm going to leave it where it is. Now, 
The most important thing about the system is, of course, the robot is a robot because it pushes the shutter. It's the only universal way to tell a camera to take a picture. So let me show you how we adjust that. There's a whole arm here that has a finger. We call that the robotic finger. And that finger has to be adjusted to lie on top of the shutter release. There's also a vertical adjustment. There's two thumb screws on the side that you can actually adjust this up and down to fit different sized cameras. I like to adjust it up and down so that when I lift this up, I have less than an inch of play. That's a little too little play. Let's go up a little bit. That's pretty good right there. So now I'll adjust, I'll, I'll tighten these thumb screws. And then my favorite way of positioning this thumb screw is I'll actually position it so that the little knob is on the shutter release. And I'll push down, and as I push down, I'll tighten the thumb screw. There. Now I've got the knob centered on the actual shutter of the camera, which means the GigaPen is going to be able to actually take pictures with my camera. Now the next thing we're going to do is we've attached the camera to the GigaPen, and I want to talk you through what it takes to make sure you set the camera up right. Now this is specific to the SD800, but you can imagine how this applies to other cameras. I've put the camera on here already, and now I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to run through all the menus. This isn't certainly not something you're going to do every time you use the GigaPen, but you need to do it the first time to make sure the camera is all set up correctly. First of all, in terms of the mode that it's in, this would be for playback. There's no images because I've erased the card. I'm going to put it in this M mode. That's the manual mode, and you'll see it says manual on the screen. If you're not getting the screen, there's a display button that gives you different kinds of display options, like display off, uh, just the image, and then all these kinds of uh, parameters. So let's just run through the display and make sure we have things set up the right way. First of all, when you're gigapanning, uh, this kind of biases the exposure. Uh, plus minus zero is a fine place to be. The next one is the lighting conditions. The important thing is to not be on auto white balance, so you do not want to be on AWB. The reason for that is you're going to take 100, 200 pictures, and you need all of them to have the same white balance so that they stitch together really well. So you have to choose the appropriate value, and right now we're probably in fluorescent light, so I'll put it on fluorescent. The next one that matters is S, super fine. We want the highest resolution we, we can get, so we want S to be the selection there in terms of resolution. And for image size overall, on this particular camera, L is 3,000 by 2,000 pixels. So that's the highest amount of resolution we can get on the image as a whole. And again, we want the very best picture we could get. Remember, you're zooming in and taking hundreds of pictures. But you want each of those pictures to be the very crispest and cleanest and most consistent picture that you can get. So that's what you need along the left side. Now, along the top, you see it says ISO 100. The important thing is to have it set to a value. Uh, next, you see the flash indicator. And right now, it's indicating that there's no flash. Of course, when we take 100 pictures, we don't want to flash because the battery won't be able to handle taking hundreds of pictures with the flash on. Now, there's other menus on the camera that also matter, and I'm going to run you through them with the menu button. So, for instance, I generally like to make sure that red-eye is off, personal preference. Um, digital zoom, you definitely want off because when you zoom in, you want to go to the end of the optical zoom. You don't want to go into digital land because that's just noise, right? As for review, some people take the picture with a short review, like two seconds. Um, I prefer to take it with review off so that um, it is immediately ready to take the next picture so that the robot can immediately press the shutter again and you'll get a picture right away. I'm going to go to the next menu, the one with the wrench and hammer. Uh, let's see if there's anything here that matters. Yeah, power savings. Um, first of all, I like to turn off auto power off because it's annoying that you're setting up the picture and then the camera turns itself off. More important though, display. I really don't want the display to go black while I'm setting up my GigaPen. So I like to make that as long as possible. It can be 10 seconds, 20 seconds, all the way up to 3 minutes. And it doesn't go any higher than 3 minutes on this camera. So I set it to 3 minutes. But if I could set it to 5 minutes, I would. Now we've gone through the menus. We have our camera in the right mode. It's going to take very high resolution pictures. And it's going to take as much as possible consistent pictures for the GigaPen.